oh look here's some data and here is a, an attempt to draw a line that might do a line of best fit over that data but who's to say whether that line is better than that line or what in fact is the line or is there one line of best fit well the short answer is no but here's a way of visualizing it that we're going to create in this demo and what i can do is turn on those distances they are the vertical deviations of all the data from my line and then you've got to measure by in some sense trying to reduce all of those distances that's a terrible line and that is better because the sum or some other measure of those distances is smaller in fact if you want to see the real y on x regression line it is that green line and if i turn off my original setup that's because the when you measure it with these points that is somehow by some measure the best you can get with this data to get a line to fit it uh, this was prompted by a question on twitter sorry x from rob southern on the screen there and he was trying to get Desmos to do this. You can do it in Desmos really easily. You can do it in Jojibra really easily. Jojibra has one advantage in that there are some other list commands in the background, which I find useful. And I'll use this to demonstrate one of those list commands in particular. Let's rewind and see how I built it. Rob Southern on Twitter, sorry, X, whatever we call it these days, was asking about how to get this demonstration of a line of best fit and the data points it's trying to represent and how do we know that line of best fit is the best one, which is to do with the deviations, and that's to do with the distances those points are away from the line. Let's try and create that demo. Really what this is, I hope, going to be is a demo of how to use lists in JoJibra, particularly one list command called zip, which is a very powerful command. But there's some other really intuitive ways to use lists as well, which also work in things like Desmos. So let's start the demo by getting some data. I'm going to pull up the spreadsheet in JoJibra. I've got some data in my clipboard, uh, which I'm just going to paste. Uh, let's say you got this data from some live experiments, or even if you just faked the data, which is what I did. Um, the thing is, you put the data from it. Like Excel doesn't draw nice scatter plots. JoJibra and Desmos do it really easily. If you dump in raw data like this into JoJibra, then it doesn't immediately plot the points. There are many ways to get it to do that, though. One way, select the data. And as long as it's paired data, you can click on the right button and click create list of points. There they go, list of points. It's labeled them all, which is maybe a pain, but you could just easily turn the labels off. Right, drag, turn off the labels. It's put them all in the algebra window, which you don't really probably want, and they look cluttered there. Um, but you can move the points around, so that's good. And crucially, it also has, at the bottom here, made a list. You can see it's a slightly different color. It's called it L1 because that's how it names lists if you don't tell it. And that is a list of the points, and that's going to be useful. Let's actually, though, uh, not do it that way. Let's show you another way, just in case you hadn't realized that the spreadsheet in Jojira works like a spreadsheet. Let's use another column in the spreadsheet and type equals and say, make a coordinate, please, with x coordinate A1 and y coordinate B1, grabbing the data from those two columns. There we go, it's made the point. And I can just copy that down just like a normal spreadsheet. This time it labels them with the labels of the cells, but you can still move them around, which is nice. Um, I could select the, the points over here and turn off the label there and now at least i've got a clean display here i can hide the spreadsheet maybe and i've just got the data points the one catch is i don't have a list of them so bring the spreadsheet back what i could do is select all the points in here and create a list that button would do it there's also a button if you like buttons this is creates a list of the selected cells and this time it asks you whether you want them to be dependent i.e if you change the spreadsheet, will it change? Or do you want to just make a bunch of free objects which forget where they came from and they're just objects? It doesn't really matter. Call it something you like. I'm going to call it points. Uh, and let's create that list. There we go. And now I can hide the spreadsheet. Uh, let's zoom into this so I can see it a bit better. Uh, right drag with the shift button held down gives you a nice scalable zoom and it scales it. So now the axes aren't equal ratio, but the data points are filling the, the, the screen nicely. So now I've got a bunch of data. Uh, what I really want to do is show what Rob asked, which is how do you show why a line trying to fit on them is better or worse? So let's start by discussing the fact that JoJibra can draw a line of best fit, and I'll show you that command at the end. It's built into JoJibra. Let's just say we I or hand draw, hand draw by I a line of best fit. Now I could type in y equals mx plus c, and it would create some sliders, and I could play with those sliders to fit the line. But that's a bit of a faff. Much more intuitive, perhaps, is just to create two points, which I could drag around the screen uh, like that. And then I can make a line which I think looks right. 
And what Rob, I think, was asking is how do I show whether one line is better than another by showing what the deviations are? And that's a technical word for how far away are these points from the line? And there are several options here. Uh, you could just get a perpendicular distance from these points to the lines. That's entirely possible. You could get the vertical distance or you could get the horizontal distance. And actually those different decisions would result in different outcomes for what is the best line. Let's stick with what they call the y on x regression line. And that means I'm going to evaluate the vertical distances. And there's a reason for that. I'm not going to go into great technical detail about different sorts of regression. Um, but you could do it the other way around and get horizontal lines that would be called the x on y regression line. The way around I'm going to do it is assuming the x-coordinates are the independent thing and the y-coordinates are the dependent, i.e. they're a result of that. And that's the way around that we often plot graphs. It is not the only way to do it before anyone gets angry with me. How do I show these things? Well, this is where you start using lists to your advantage. So maybe I, I don't really care about A and B labels. Let's just hide them. But I can see I can drag these points around. What I'd like to do is show all the vertical lines from the points to that function. And it's crucially... Uh, important to recognize that that line is a function. It's called it f. It's written as a line, in fact, but because it has a label, I can still put values into it and get values out like a function. So that's what I'm going to do. The values I want to put into that function are the x coordinates of all these data points. And what I'd like to do is find out the y coordinates of where they would appear on that line. To do that, what I'd like to get is the x coordinates separated from the points thing, and that's dead easy. There is a command in GeoGebra called x of. If I, for example, take x of 3, 4, it will spit out 3, like it did. Uh, so that's how the x command works. There's a similar one called y. Let's, in fact, just grab the x and y coordinates of all our points and realize that the x command can take an input of a list. If I put in the list points, you can see I get a new list out, which is the list of the x coordinates. Let's get the y coordinates as well. They might be useful. Who knows? What I'd like to do, though, is put all those x coordinates into my line I've got there to get the y coordinates of where they would fit onto the line. And that's as simple as doing f of uh, L1. That's the list of x coordinates. Now, they haven't appeared on there because that's just a list of numbers. So what I really want is a list of the points. And that's going to combine L1 and L3 now. Luckily, I could just type a point which has x coordinate from L1 and y coordinate from L3. And there they are. Let's make them a different color so we can see where they are. Let's make them red. So the red list is where the data point x values would appear on the line of best fit, uh, which is not necessarily a line of best fit unless it is the best one. You can see that it moves around with my line. And again, going back to what Rob asked, is what I really want to do is show the distances visually if possible, but he also wanted the numbers. How far away from these points are they? How far away from the line are these points? And to do that, Let's do it visually first. What I'd like to draw is a segment, a line segment between each point, uh, the, the original points and the red points. And here's where you get a catch with the list commands. So everything I've been doing so far also works really well in Desmos. It works with lists in a similar way, maybe less visually. But anyway, I'm not going to get into the comparison. They're both excellent pieces of dynamic geometry. In this case, though, the command to draw a line in GeoGebra is a segment. It's a line segment because it's not an infinitely long line. It needs a point to start and a point to end. And if I try and do the intuitive list command, I want a segment going from a point on the points list to the point in L4, the red line. It doesn't like it because the segment command prefers to have a point. It doesn't understand how to work with a list. And that's a shame, but it's dead easy to fix because there is another command, and this is the powerful one, I want to show you. The command I want to talk about is the zip command. If I start typing a command, it usually tells me roughly what arguments are going to go into it in GeoGebra. You can click on the online help to get more detail. I'm just going to talk you through it by way of an example because it's not always intuitive, but this is super useful for combining information from lots of lists in GeoGebra. And imagine it like it's called, it's called zip because it's like uh, two lists of teeth coming together and matching. Uh, in this case, what I'm going to do is zip together the point list and the red list as I've called them the list called points and the list called L4 because I've named them really well uh, and we're going to kind of zip them together so what you do is you type an expression something you want to to do the zipping and it can be anything in this case I want it to be a segment and this is where you get a command that doesn't like a list to take individual points from a list and I'm going to call the points the segment command needs p and q and before you complain that you don't know what p and q are neither does jojibro that's why they haven't gone blue i'm deliberately using letters i haven't used anywhere else they are dummy variables in this and all i'm going to do is tell the zip command where to get the p's and q's from 
uh, so that's why it says var1 in this next argument. I'm going to call it p. I've used p earlier, so here's where I say, look, go and get p from a list, and it's going to be one of the points. So I'm going to get p from the list of the original data called points. And the other end of the line, I want to be coming from, which is q, I want to be coming from the red list, which is the points on the line of best fit. So let's say that's l4. And even before I press return, you can see it's drawn all those vertical lines. And crucially, it's variable. So if I change the line, you see all those vertical distances move with it. And if I change one of the points, that's moving around as well. So visually, this is what I think Rob was after. And it's a good demonstration. Measuring those lines tells you like, well, that's a bad line because all the deviations are in some sense negative or positive, depending on how you measure it. Um, and actually, we're now getting to the heart of what makes a good line of best fit is where you somehow minimize all these errors. In practice, there are some complications. Uh, some of them are positive and some of them are negative when you do a subtraction. And maybe you care about ones that are really far away more. So in practice, what a, a good regression technique is, and there are many, but a very, very commonly used one that you may have heard about is called the least squares regression. And that's referring to you take the square of all of these distances, which deals with the negative versions and squares them, and it emphasizes larger ones get even bigger when you square them. And if you add all of them together, then a good line of best fit will be one where that's a small number or the smallest, which is why they call it the least squares regression line. What Rob also asked, though, and I think this is the, the visual thing he asked, what he wanted was actually to get those distances. And that's not here because this list is a list of the segments and that is those distances, but it's not accounting for positive and negative. So let's see if we can just sort that out. What I really want is those numbers to be negative if they are somehow below the line or above the line, depending on which way we start it. And I think that's going to be easy because we've got the list of Y coordinates. There, they, there it is. And we've got the list of the Y coordinates of the, the points on the line. So actually, it's just the difference between these two will be all we need. And let's just get it the right way around. Let's just do L2 minus L3. Is that doing what we want? You can see it's the same numbers as before, but the 4.5, uh, so it's L2 is the original data point, take away the line. Is that right? Have I done it right? L2 take L3. So it's the data point minus the line, which means that one's positive uh, and that one will be negative. Now they're not in order. So that first one is at 9.28, about somewhere in here and it should correspond to 18.92 yeah so it's about there and the first one is positive so I think it's an intuitive way around it doesn't actually matter if you did it the other way around because when you do this the automatic way you're just squaring all these numbers so in actual fact we could have used the length of the segments as well now you've got a tool. I think you can move a point around and show that it, the deviation from the line is the vertical distance. You've got a draggable line that lets you say, well, that, obviously that's a rubbish line and that's rubbish too. So what is it about something like this that's intuitively good is actually to do with minimizing these distances in that direction. And there were other decisions you could have made about which directions you were going to try to minimize. Let's see uh, what actually the, the technique does to get it right. So in JoJoBa, the command to do it automatically is called fit. In fact, you can fit all sorts of things to all sorts of things. You can fit exponentials, you can fit polynomials, all these things, super powerful regression tools. I'm gonna to fit a line to a list of points. So this is the way I could have done it straight away. Oh, look at that. My estimate wasn't too bad. Let's make this one green. So the, the line of best fit is a green line, the regression line. And you see that in some sense, my line as I move it around is is actually capturing that quite nicely. When I put it over there, you can kind of get some intuitive sense that these lines, maybe the sum of those distances and the squares, in fact, is as small as it could ever be. Uh, so there we have a good way of doing it. What we could do just to finish this off is show the distances from the actual line of best fit. So if I turn off the segments I made and maybe the function I've just been playing with just for a moment and do by way of practice, if you're following along at home, a list command to get the deviations from the line of best fit, the one that doesn't move around. Let's see if we can do that again. I'd like it visual, so let's just do it in one go with a zip command. This time I'm going to be super efficient and just do it in one go. So I want a zip of segments. I want a list of segments. The points P and Q need to come from, well, let's start with the original list. So P from the list points. And Q needs to be the Y coordinates 
uh, as if you put the x coordinates into that line of best fit. Now I haven't made a list of that y coordinates of the line of best fit, but I'm just do it in this command all in one go. So it's the function is called g. So let's do g of the x coordinates of the original points, which is the list l1. That's not doing what it should. Why is that not doing what it should? It's g of the. Why is it? I'm very puzzled about why that's working. Ah, because g of l1 is not giving me a list of points. I need it to come from a list of points, which is actually going to be l1 comma list of g of l1. There we go. Well, a nice bit of error spotting here. Guess what I'm trying to do at the very end of the demo here is say that you don't have to make all the intermediate lists. You can all do it in one command. There is a bunch of um, dynamic geometry users, particularly in Jojo, that enjoy trying to make the demonstration you want to make in one command. And it can get pretty mind bending and maybe it's not very efficient for error checking, but it is quite nice to try and truncate it all down to one command. But that is now the deviations from the line of best fit and that line of best fit, actually what it's done to get it has squared all of those lengths, added them up and found the line that makes that number the least, which is why they call it the least squares regression line. There's loads more to say about the lovely maths behind this, but I think we should stop the demo there. Hopefully it's been a good demo of the zip command in Jojibra and a nice demo of how the least squares regression line works.